Hello everyone, Attack Power here with the newest update for the Men of Steel gameplay showcase number two from the new DLC coming out for Steel Division 2. Let's dive right into this. And our two new divisions this time are first Airborne. Yay! Some American Airborne divisions, very exciting. Uh, things pulled out of Normandy 44, if I'm not mistaken. And the 715th Infantry Division for the Axis. So very fun. We're going to dive into these and see how they are doing. For those who don't know, uh, Steel Division 2 is getting a new DLC sometime during the summer, I believe. It's going to add eight new divisions to the game, along with a uh, patch that adds traits, all kinds of new traits and everything. So uh, should really, really change that the game is going to have a very fresh feel and probably a very unbalanced feel as well at the beginning. But hopefully, Eugen, uh, after six years of balancing this game, do not nuke it on their first attempt to add new things into it. But this, uh, aside from that, I digress. Let's get into these divisions. If you guys enjoy these videos, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider supporting over on Patreon. All right. So first, airborne task. I'm not going to read all this stuff. We're just looking at like the actual division, uh, what they're going to include and stuff. So let's check out our slot layout here. So huge infantry tab, huge recon tab, both very aggressively costed. Only one three point slot between. Oh no, there's one three point slot in the end of both. Otherwise, a lot of one point slots, a lot of one point slots in the recon with only a couple two. So really strong there. Really small tank tab but not expensive so it's not like you won't be able to bring tanks in it just won't bring much uh support tab not very good you're going one one two two three three four so very expensive on the latter end here uh anti-air uh, excuse me anti-tank seems solid once again kind of expensive though two three point slots in the end here I means you're really only getting four slots until it starts getting expensive aa very limited might not be good now if the a is good it doesn't really matter but still uh, artillery pretty aggressively costed you can get a lot and air force yeah you can get a lot but it gets very expensive towards the end so it's an airborne division though so i would assume infantry and air are what you're doing in this division that would be my stab in the dark at what this division is meant to do but let's dive in to see what they say about this reconnaissance category is a good amount of open slots most of them being cheap furthermore you have plenty of options all right let's see our options these include the British AB Scouts, AB Snipers, and Pathfinders, okay? So, you know, we don't. the, the Sniper is probably the most interesting thing. Uh, I don't remember what the Pathfinders do have exactly. Probably like a Piot or something. Uh, FFI Subatours found in first DFL, okay? Those are solid units. Um, new American AB Scouts and Pathfinders, as well as the Canadian Forceman Scouts. Ooh, ladder of seven-man squads with commando traits, scope rifle, and Willipede phosphorus grenade. So, yeah, that's pretty strong. That's a good unit. Seven man sniper team. Anytime you have a sniper team, it's good and make it like seven men is like really good then. Soul reconnaissance vehicle or jeeps and sidecars. So you won't really be using those. Deployable from phase B or some heavier mechanized units such as scouts with the M20 transports, MB Greyhound. So Greyhound's not very exciting in B phase. They're more of an A phase like rush unit. Not so much a B phase bring it in because you can unit. Uh, so, but maybe you have so many cheap slots in the recon, you do want it. These are the f forcemen. Oh, so these aren't these guys. These are forcemen from down in the infantry tab, but ooh, they do look spicy. Look at that. Three Thompsons, automatic rider. These guys are CQC monsters with this TNT. Ooh, all right, let's check this out. Infantry, pretty good. I would say so, with numerous cheap slots and options. Get ready to play the British AB Paris, Paris Piot, AB Par Par Engineers and Leaders, as well as the FI Machizards. Wow, that's a lot of options. So these are the, the Molotov units. These are the units out of 6th Airborne. Note that the British AB Paris have been reworked to better follow their actual uh, historical set. As such, they lose the Gammon Bombs and one stand in favor of a scoped Enfield rifle, which will also affect 6th Airborne's. Ooh... Is Sixth Airborne coming back on the map? Is that what they're saying, folks? I'm telling you, infantry with snipers are super strong. The 5th Cav used to have Grenachetti with snipers, and they were insanely good. Um, infantry with snipers are really, really strong. So this could be a big buff for Sixth, and this is obviously just strong straight up for this division as well. American par paratroopers come with lots of variety. We have the leader. Don't care. It's just a leader. Uh, AV rifles, 12-man squad, two Thompsons, one LMG, nine Grands, and a bazooka. I mean, there's no complaining about that. It's basically a chunky infantry squad with a bazooka. Now, it only has one light machine gun, but the bazooka really takes this over the, over the top here. Leader, engineer, engineer, we know this one. Oh, whoa, wait, 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 back up. AB engineers, Thompson, Grand, and Flamethrower. Oh, I thought it was just like the regular engineer. Okay, so it has a flamethrower instead of a TNT. That's interesting. And then the glider rifles, 12-man squad, one Thompson, 10 Grands, and one bar, plus a bazooka. So very similar to the AB rifles, 
just slightly different loadout with the BAR, which is better than the, well, maybe it's not better. I don't know which of these LMGs is better. I'm sure you guys in the comments know which one's stronger. Uh, really, that will determine it. They're the same size. One is an extra Thompson. The other has an extra rifle instead. Uh, the difference is negligible. AB Assault Group, this unit represents these guys. 12-man assault with five Thompson, six grands, a BAR, and a Willie Peak grenade. Wow, that's good. That's good. They'll have increased veterancy level and the shock trait. Yeah, these guys are going to tear, tear through forests. Very solid. Uh, AB Demolition Group, 12, 10 carbines, two grands, TNT, and smoke grenades. So that's, yeah, that's quite good. Okay. All right, so another, so like some really good CQC. I wouldn't say really good long range infantry at all. Uh, none of these have double machine guns, which is kind of a prerequisite to being a good long range infantry unit. They do have, uh, they do have grands, which make them better than your average unit, but not without having two machine guns, they're meh at best. Uh, the Canadian Americans, let's see what these guys bring. We have the leader, Forceman, 13 group team with three. Th so this is the one we looked up up here. This is good. This is very good. Uh, this is a very strong unit at all ranges, really. Uh, you do actually get some range, although they're only 600 meter assault rifles, uh, roughly equivalent to an FG 42. So that's not bad. Forceman BAR, another 13 man squad with a grease gun, 10, two BARs and a bazooka. Okay. So this one's definitely a more solid, uh, long range unit here. Uh, this one. Yeah. This is the long, the strongest long range units we've seen. Uh, each Forceman comes as a, wait, each Forceman unit comes as a single card only okay so you only get one of each of these so you only get one card of each of these so they are very strong but you only get one so that's definitely gonna be limiting their usage significantly aside from the ffi already waiting in the task force on the ground fighting force of france represents single also represented by a single combat phase a and b credit card of chasseur pados these are from them and they're 12 men squad two thompson three carbines six grands and an lmg okay solid not amazing and then rifles late in C phase. Okay. St I mean, these units seem strong, but not like crushingly so. The the sniper British, yes, seems strong. The American squads, lots of bazookas. I mean, that's great. I think they're gonna struggle against like Panzergrens. At a range, the Panzergrens should win pretty consistently against these units. Continuing down though, tanks. Rather limited, though cheap. You won't have much to do. Stewart's and one card of M4A1s combat lock to C phase. That's, that's a rough roll. That's a rough roll for real support. Decent, not too expensive. All are relatively light though. HMG teams, Vickers, MG 34, M1919, and basically 50 cal. So 50 cals are awesome. Supply units, whatever fire support units, two inch mortar and M4105 in C phase only. And then the commander, yeah, that's not great. I mean, at least you get these in C phase, but outside of that, and I don't get a sense this is a balanced kind of deck. Uh, I don't have a, I don't get a strong feeling you're playing for C's phase at this division. I feel like you're playing Maverick or Vanguard trying to run your opponent down because you don't have a lot of heavier support options to go long. Yeah. Anti-tank, medium slot, choices are rather restricted. AB and bazooka team, uh, Piot's bazookas, you always take the bazookas. Uh, all variants of six pounder and 57 mils from B phase onward. You can bring in M tens. Will they have the APCR? Looks like they will. That makes those good. It's not the worst AT tab. It's not amazing either. Going to definitely struggle against certain things for sure. A phase, you will struggle. B phase, the M tens might save you a bit, uh, because those are just super duper strong right now. Anti-air, not one of the best categories. There's no AA and A. That's never good. That's really, really bad, actually. A single card of M16 AA and B and some Bofors in C. Yeah, that's bad. That's that's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, artillery, choices are light. You get your mortars. Now, if the American ones come with radio, that's really good. Uh, you also get to play airborne howitzers and C phase. You get M21s. Uh, radio mortars are great, but that's it. Air, count on pretty good air cover. I would hope so. My goodness gracious. Americans provide a good part with B-26 Marauders. Those are really strong bombers. Mitchell's really solid as well. Uh, Hellcat. 
some recon capacity, whatever, some P-51s. Well, fighter bombers are pretty good. The fighter is fine. It's good. It's expensive, though. British Future Sea Fire. That's a pretty good recon plane. And Bowfighter AT. Okay, so this is very good. You at least get AT rockets in the Bowfighter, so you'll have something to work with. Uh, like most paratrooper divisions, it's necessary to fight up close. However, division will fare far less well on open terrain. Yeah. Yeah, Air Force definitely. I mean, this is basically, it's very similar to the other one, the special division. It's basically Air Force and infantry again. So not excited to see two divisions that are this similar in setup. Um, I mean, they're different. They're going to be very different and play differently, but their actual like concept you know, airborne division where your infantry are amazing and everything else is kind of blah, except for your air force is a little repetitive, but you know, it might be, it could be a fun division to play in terms of like on, uh, uh, what, what's the, the cell, you know, something like that. CQC fun. This could be very good. Hopping over to the Axis 715th infantry active on the Italian front at Anzio. Okay, cool. So it's combat. This uh, battle group is combat phase locked again. A phase represents organic and attached forces. Initial counterattack phase B, those fascist Italian reinforcements coming from uh, Deci Mamas and the SS. Okay, let's check out the tab layout here. Uh, recon tab, not super cheap, but not overly expensive either. Infantry tab, pretty darn cheap. You can get most of it for one point. That's pretty good. Tank tab, pretty cheap as well with a lot of one point slots and only one three pointer. Uh, support tab, not super cheap. This is kind of expensive, uh, gets up, but you can get a fair number of slots before it's really expensive. Uh, anti-tank solid, solid. Once again, like you'll get an, you'll get enough to function for sure. A tab, not looking too hot. Uh, RD tab looking solid, at least availability wise and air tab looking a little limited, but not super expensive. Let's see here. Recon, a good category with even priced options, a large arsenal to choose from. Okay, that's fun. You get your Alfclairs, your Fusiliers, fine. You get Boicha, French Punhard, 25 mil armored car. Okay, that's pretty good. Armored cars are always good. Uh, veteran Panzer IIs. Oh, I love Panzer IIs. They're so fun. They're just like cool infantry to use. Uh, not infantry, cool little tanks to use. Auto cannon tanks, really solid. From B phase onward, you get the RSI Veteran 20 mil heavy Jeep and Dechima Esport. Uh, es exploratory, excuse me. Decima exploratory. Ooh. I don't know what they are, but they seem fun. If this has no armor, it's not good. If it has armor, it's good. This is, looks like just a really beefed up exploratory squad. Exploratory, excuse me. We'll see. Now, into the infantry. Can count on lots of infantry, which is no surprise. Lots of choices and with quite a few new units, okay? Usual suspects, Pioneer, Pioneer Fear, Grenadier Fear, and Panzer Grenadier Fear. Okay? He's Panzer Grenadier Fear. Yeah, that, um, yeah, okay. I'm just trying to remember like what that guy looks like. Anyway, before moving into the new move units, Battlegroup's core cadre of combat soldiers come as the Grenadier 15W and Pioneer 15W. 15W stands for 15 Vela or 15th recruitment wave. These recruits are all too sick, old, or too scrawny for active service. Squad carries a disheartened trait, and essentially just even crappier versions of these usual crappy troops. Okay, fine. Uh, Luftwaffe Jaeger, I think that's Luftwaffe, our Luftwaffe penal troops stationed on the Eastern Front before being hastily airlifted to Anzio. They're equipped with Soviet-captured units of 15-man squad. That's pretty good. Uh... 4 MP40s, 10 SVTs, and MG34, plus AT grenades, and the fanatical trait. Okay, so these guys are, these guys are beefy. They got some muscle to them. Only one machine gun is kind of a bummer, but 10 SVTs, I mean, these guys will do some pretty good damage at close range. They're not amazing at close range, but the fanatical trait helps because they won't immediately surrender when they get pinned, which is nice. Makeup for its initial losses, the 715th was amalgamated with a Panzer Grenadier res, uh, regiment from the General Reserve, meaning it's truck born, not half track. This particular formation organized, the old whatever, whatever. These units are brought in two distinct flavors. Pendergrand 41, holding 12 men, one MP40, nine rifles, and two MG34 plus a Panzerfaust, and the Panzer Grenadier 41 with a Panzerbusch 41 uh, anti-tank rifle. I think these are awful. Pretty sure this anti-tank rifle is literally the most terrible thing in the game. Essentially useless. If it's the one I'm thinking of, and I'm pretty confident it is. So this unit, not great, although it does get two. It's it's a Panzergren MG34. 
if we're putting it frankly. This is a Panzergrad MG34 with with a Panzerfaust. It's a little bigger than normal. It's got an extra man or two, but otherwise it's just a Panzergrad MG34. So not super exciting. Combat phase B lock. The Italians come to the rescue. SS Legionati make a comeback. Woo! These guys were only in 17th SS and now they're coming back here. So that's exciting. Very strong unit there. Nice to see that in another division. Uh, the Decima Moss. Decima? Is it Decima? Decima? Decima Moss uh, deployed in three versions, all equipped with automatic weapons. So we have the normal one, eight man strong with seven Berettas, one MG42 and eight T grenades. The RDT version with six Berettas, two. LMGs and a Panzerfaust and the Commander, which is a 3 and a, I don't know which of these is best. Uh, probably the first one. If you're using these guys, you want them to fight at close range, which means the LMGs are kind of useless, which means having one less and having one more Beretta is stronger than having another LMG. And one MG, uh, MG42 might be almost as strong as two Berettas. <laughs> Truth be told, might be almost equivalent. Uh, tank tab, reasonable category, a few slots, but quite affordable. You have a Tiger E. Okay, but it's veteran, which means you probably, it's probably double vetted, which means you get one, two, or four, uh, and that's it. Stug three, okay, plus the command variant, and a Panzer P40 phase lock to A. So this is the P26. Okay, and this is a, this is a good unit. The P26 is a really well-rounded unit. So actually, an okay tank tap. Like, it's not big, and you definitely don't have much to work with, but it's not bad either. Um, so... Very good. Okay, uh, Division, good support. You get disheartened MG34 teams, which hopefully means they're cheaper, which makes them very good, as well as regular MG42, IG33, IG18, 50 mil mortars, so that's all great. You get the Bogward 4, that's the uh, remote-controlled bomb. I, I'm pretty sure that's a remote-controlled bomb. That's awesome. And the Sturmpanzer 4, another 2K assault gun. Uh, phase B onward, they bring the Obiche 65, so it's assault gun and some more mortars. So this is a very good support tab. Very, very good support tab. Uh, Anti-tank, medium amount of slots. Commanders enjoy usual Pack 30. I love the Pack 38 so much. So Pack 38, Pack 40, Panzer Shrek, Martyr 3. Oh wow, uh, these are incredibly efficient. Heavy firepower brought by an Elephant. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, this division is shaping up right here. Uh, Italians bring the bread of 47 mil. But you only get it in B phase. Oh, it's really only useful in A. Uh, Anti-air, not one of the best categories. Three slots, quickly turning expensive. All right, what do they got? Options are pretty light. 20 mil, 37 mil, and an SDK of Z71. So this is not bad, actually. 37s are great. Well, they're not great. They're solid. 37s are solid, especially if it's a if it's a flak 43, it's a phenomenal. If it's a flak 36, it's meh. Or flak 41. I forget flak 30. I think it's flak 36. Uh, then it's meh. But a SDK of Z71 is always fantastic. So this is fine. Like legit, this is perfectly fine. It's it's small, but there's plenty of divisions with small AA tabs that are still very good. Artillery, good number of slots, large amount of choice, including new ones. Oh, that's fun. Usual array of 81s and 120s. The new 122 millimeter, which is an A19 Soviet gun. That's a solid artillery piece. Uh, 149 Italian M19. Okay, cool. Morsa 220 mil. That's fun. Those are big, big booms. And SDKFZ 150 mil self-propelled gun on a uh, Lorraine Trassis. Ooh. Phase B onward, you get the Italian light howitzer. So this is... This is a good artillery tab. How big was it? I forget what the slot cost was. Pretty good. I mean, you can definitely get a good mix of this stuff. And then finally, air. Nothing fancy. Average slots, ditto prices. You get the Spavietto bombers, which are pretty solid. Yep, those are pretty good. Uh, Luftwaffe JU-88. Focke-Wolf 90. Okay, depends on the version. a 8 absolutely fantastic. A6s, meh. Uh, DO-217 bombers and BF-109 G6 fire. These are the, like, the big fat fighters, I believe. So, yeah. This seems like a very strong division. Depends on how that phase locking works out. Uh, you're, it's probably a longer game division because of the phase locking keeps you from playing a lot of your strong units early, which make it hard, but maybe you can get away with Maverick. I don't know. Uh, so yeah. Interesting division. I'm more excited about 17, 7 or 15th than I am about 1st Airborne. And not because I generally play Axis Division, but this division feels like it's got some severe weaknesses to make up for its really strong singular tab. So, should be interesting. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this, hit that like button, subscribe, and consider supporting on Patreon. Thanks a bunch, and have a fantastic day.